<laughs> What's going on, everybody? We're here. It's back at the Santuku podcast. I'm John. He's Christian. There you go. We got it. We're getting this oh. better. And so, uh, welcome back to the show. We're here. We're ready to get it going. And uh, hope you guys like. Listen and stay tuned. Yeah. Order up. Um, so a semi-controversial topic for this episode, um, and it's something we run into. I don't know how everyone feels about it. Uh, it might be just you and me, but um, what sets us apart from being just called a videographer? And uh, this is something I know you are kind of like pent up. It's like almost a trigger word for you whenever you're like. <laughs> People were were out networking and people were like, Yeah, I need new videographers to work with me. I think I I think it's not as a trigger word. I got nothing against videographers. I mean, it's it's tough what they do. Um the reason why I don't like being called a videographer is because I'm not. Yeah. You know, um a videographer kind of works with what they have, you know, they don't really set much they don't really do much lighting and you know, for the most part, obviously there's obviously like the uh, few rotten apples <laughs> the, 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 the world that like sets up lights and stuff but majority of the time you're just like a run and gun shooter yeah you know yeah. and you know you just kind of use daylight as on um, you know to your advantage most of the time and just you know you shoot as you go yeah majority of the times you're also shooting on a dslr or like a mirrorless camera um and i like to tell people that no i'm not a videographer because um i'm a step above that you know i'm we 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 plan things out. We set stages up. You know, we 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 block lighting out. You know, um, and all that other stuff that cinematographers do. And so, um, there's a certain not saying that video videographers. I mean, the the the, the reality is that uh, videographers at a certain point have to step up and become a cinematographer. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. If they want to take it to the next level, you know, videographers kind of like where you start off at. And if you're shooting weddings and stuff like that, that's more of a videographer. Um, once you start doing film and, and music videos and stuff like that, um, you start becoming a cinematographer and you start having to plot, you know, plan and kind of plot out your lighting and like, uh, um, and just, you know, you're stepping your game up, right? And you're creating things that can't be done with just running and gunning, you yeah. know? Uh, so one of the reasons why I was not triggered, but I was just trying to make it known that, no, I don't just grab a camera and shoot. Like, yeah, we yeah. actually shoot real music videos. Yeah. You know, like, we actually plot shit out. We actually do VFX. We actually do all that type of stuff. Yeah. You know, it's not, I'm just not grabbing my random Sony camera and just shooting you in a parking lot. Yeah. You know? Uh, so, you know, that's why I was kind of like, you know, not a video <laughs> from a cinematographer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But there's nothing wrong with being a videographer. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong at all. That's just that's what you do. I mean, there's some videographers that make great money. I mean, if you're a wedding person, some of those weddings can get you five to six k a wedding. You yeah, know? yeah. Uh, obviously, that's in the after years of doing it. But, yeah, you know, that's great money, especially if you're just a one man band. Yeah, um, or just have another person working with you. But yeah. you know, we have we actually have a full blown team that we work with. You know, we have a first AC. We have. Uh, you know, grip and gaffer guy, you know, we have all that stuff that come along with getting an actual cinematographer, you know, mm -hmm. and that's the reason also we can't do videos for super cheap. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got a whole team of it. So. Yeah. And um, I, I, I know I was in a, a meeting recently for, uh, for a music video and I, I had to disclose that to him. I was like, look, like we're not, you know, we're not Joey who will film this music video, sit in a pitch meeting with you once. We're going to do maybe two to three meetings with you. And we're going to set up this music video as something you guys will like. But the other part of it is the only reason why this is going to cost so much. Is we got mouths to feed. There's so many people who, well, I guess not necessarily depend, but like there's people like we can't just bring them out from their day job and be like, hey, come film with us for free. And like sometimes, you know, those people will do it just because they're good friends of ours. They they trust you know, the company and what the company can do. Um, but, but yeah, I essentially had to disclose that, you know, we're, we're a team and there's mouths to feed and we can't, you know, they're driving to location. It's, it's not as a matter of, um, simply just picking up the camera and shooting. And even then, like when, when, if an artist or if you are an artist and you're like, you're, you're curious and why it costs so much, 
art the camera we're filming on now is the, you know you know a thousand dollar twelve hundred dollar camera that's not including everything else and we have to tack that on to the price of what's happening it's not like it, you know you can go and buy yourself your own camera and everything else but like at that point it's kind of like you're spending money in places you don't need to that's what we're here for is that we're going to put this all together for you um and all these things cost money you know um in that regard what sets us apart and why is it so expensive for us to like further continue off that why is it all so expensive for us to do x y and z compared to videographer well like i said a videographer just kind of takes what he has and shoots it and i'll power it to you you know sometimes i wish i could do the same thing yeah you know? um, but um like i said earlier uh we're planning things out. We're creating sets. We're yeah. we're creating scenes, and 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 there's a there's a bigger picture to the overall story than yeah. just grabbing a performance. You yeah, know, we're actually creating uh, a skit. You know, we're actually you know uh, creating visuals, and we're plotting out uh, you know blocking out camera movement and you know and stuff like that. Uh, compared to uh, most videographers, uh, don't really. Um, they just kind of run and gun, you know. They just, just like off the limb, yeah. off the limb, and you know, and, that, and that's great. Like I said, that's great, and you know, and it gets to a certain point too, where like um, you can just whenever you take that next step into becoming a cinematographer, um, you can, you know, there's gonna be those times where you're gonna need a run and gun, and you have that experience behind you, and you're gonna yeah. know what to do and what works and what doesn't. Yeah. Um, but you know, for the most part, you know. Um, you know, we're, we're doing so much more behind the scenes that you don't realize yeah. that separates us apart from being a videographer. Yeah. And what are some of those things that, I guess, for to enlighten everybody, what are some of those things we we have done in the past or we still currently do to now that, like, kind of makes this more of a, like, some of the behind the scenes someone would watch in this bonus featurette or something like that or something, like, to kind of show people, like, there's a lot more going on than just us showing up the day of and we're gonna start filming set up lights X, Y, and Z. I'd say like, um, you know, uh, a lot of the stuff that we do, uh, a lot of the artists and a lot of, or the client in general, is not really gonna see, uh, cause a lot of it is done in uh, uh, pre-production. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, you know, it's everything from, um, you know, um, it's everything from, um, you know, getting the team together, you know, uh, doing a, like a you know, casting call, uh, uh, calling locations, uh, figuring out a uh, rental uh, for equipment, you know, um, so much more that I can get into um, that we do behind the scenes. Um, and you can even add it on onto this. You know, there's so much that we do, um, so much so that you know, between me and Christian, we split the workload because um, there's so much going on that we have to do before we get ready for production. So whenever production comes, uh, the day comes, we're ready and everything is moving like a perfect train, I guess you mm -hmm. could say. You know? mm -hmm. um, and so everything's just super smooth, you know. Um, and I feel like that's what separates us from a videographer as, you know, you call them, you tell them to be there on that day and they'll just be there. You know, they'll take their camera, maybe one light and that's it, you know, mm -hmm. compared to we got two cars or a truckload full of equipment, you know, yeah. and, and we're setting things up. We're taking an hour to, you know, two hours setting things up for that, you know, one yeah. location. And sometimes you got to, you know, we're doing multiple locations and yeah. all sorts of stuff. You got, you got to deal with casting or uh, we're doing, um, catering you know uh, we, we <laughs> always you know we always have food on our sets you know and, yeah uh, you know we're you know we're we're that step above just your average friend that has a camera you know yeah, yeah. uh we, you know we have a set of, of people that we can contact to get things done you know when it comes to vfx when it comes to uh anything in general you know audio engineers anything that we want to create we have those resources that yeah. we can tap into uh, and we can deliver that end product that you want yeah. compared to a, a, a videographer. And like I said, I'm not saying, you know, there's always going to be that bad batch <laughs> of videographers that are literally cinematographers, but they're still calling themselves videographers. Yeah. Um, but I'm just giving like an overall uh, um, 
you know, an overall opinion of why I don't call myself a videographer yeah. and I'm more of a cinematographer. Yeah. You know? yeah. And so, you know, I take pride in that. You know? Do you think, um, I just thought about this, do you think the videographer is just a hot word right now that like everyone who's now just coming into the industry and being like, oh, videographer, maybe that's what I want to do. And now they're just, they're, they're seeing uh, like, like famous, like video photo people now who do a little bit of both, uh, just throwing all these things into a like a pile and calling it videographer when in reality, um, this is going to be different from videographer. Like your videographer will be this versus this. Uh, yes and no. Mm. Uh, I think, uh, I think if you grew up in a place that's a hotbed for like the film industry, if you grew up in Atlanta, LA, you probably already know what's the difference. Uh, mm. I believe it's our location. I believe uh, yeah. there's not, you know, we're, we're based here in Orlando, Florida, and I, there's not a big film industry here for the most part. Uh, in this city, at least, obviously, you know, Miami, you know, and obviously Atlanta is not too far from here. Um, but um, I feel like, you know, most people here don't really know somebody that's in the industry. And so, uh, you know, they the first thing they think about is a videographer, you know, and that's probably because most jobs is that's what they require as a videographer. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever they're looking for video work and stuff like that, obviously, like I said, weddings, parties, you know, yeah. whatever that's required, you know, real estate, that's a videographer. Yeah. Um, so I think they end up kind of getting the two confused, but eventually I think they realize that there's levels to this shit. And yeah. Like, you know, yeah. there's a videographer and there's a cinematographer. Yeah. yeah. And then you have your also your first AC, second AC. Yeah. yeah. And you have, um, you know, everything else in, in between that will carry a production. Like I said, I'm not shitting on videographers at all. Everybody, you know, everybody started somewhere. And, you know, the, and most of the time, <laughs> if you're going to get a job, doing something you're going to be a videographer and not a cinematographer yeah so obviously there's no problem with you being a videographer most companies need a videographer for whatever their case is you know products you know all that stuff uh but you know there's a difference to the two yeah actually my my day job i i do i think one of my bosses follows the, actually the, the channel but uh whenever our clients and we have some pretty they have some pretty good clients that we work with um, but like whenever I go to contact, I don't even call myself a videographer. I'll call, I'll, call, I'll text the contact and say, Hey, this is the camera op for tomorrow. Like, just letting you know, I'm going to be here this time. I like, I have a tendency to completely go around videographer. Um, just cause like, I want to almost stray away from that stigmatism. And I think also, um, I don't know how, like how your family is, but even for, for me, coming from like an uh, like an Asian background or like just more some of that, you know, traditional background. Um, saying I'm a cinematographer. Um, I even started like, instead of saying music videos, I started saying um, we work with the music industry. Uh, we, we, you know, developing video content for music and, and industry folks. Um, I just use different words than videographer to kind of like consolidate, even if it takes a second for me to explain. It, it kind of, puts more um shitty ass hombre outside one time. Uh it, it puts more weight to the job than just being like, oh he's a videographer. Christian's doing video, videographer, you know, like it's just like, no, I, you know, I'm a cinematographer. I um you know, I own a, own a production company that works in the music industry. It's it sounds more legit than just being like, I'm a videographer. And, and like and I think that goes back to location base. Oh yeah. Because you know, obviously I feel like if he was in a hotbed, uh, uh, you know, in a city that's a hotbed in the industry for, for filmmaking, we wouldn't have to explain ourselves that. The, the reality is that where we're at in many cities across, you know, the country, this industry that we're in is almost non-existent to them. They think this is like some type of pipe dream, you know, some type of dream. And so I feel like we have to uh, be wise with our words for people to take us serious. Because a lot of yeah. people think that, like I said, a videographer, oh, that's just a little side gig, a little side hustle. Yeah, you know? yeah. They yeah. can't make a living off yeah. of that and stuff like that. I was like, no, we're making a living off of it. You know, like, yeah. you know, this is an actual industry and job. You know, it, I can't even tell you. I was like, two trillion dollar industry or whatever it is. Oh you know, yeah. From, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so I just feel like it's it's very location bias if that makes sense. Yeah, you know? yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um. So with with everything now, like. For us, we understand like um, industry standard is like, you know, 
that was like you know, over a thousand dollars per day. Um, for a lot of people that we worked with recently, uh, or a lot of like new artists up and coming, think, oh, you can make a video for seven hundred to a thousand dollars. But in reality, you know, in, in like when we when we were working. Um, working into the industry, we've worked on sets where their artists understood it's like a 10, 20, $30,000 video that requires to be made. Do you think this new wave of videographers who are coming into the industry now are essentially watering down our prices? Do you think this like, do you think they like, because they're able to step into the world, this world. And even though we're, we might not be the same as them um, in terms of what what's happening or what's everything doing, this your standard customer is going to be like hey they can do it for a thousand it's just a video why can't you do it for a thousand um like i said i think this is on location okay um i think obviously if you was in la yeah obviously they know the difference yeah and being somewhere that people don't know about the industry yeah they don't know the differences and the technical difficulties that go behind the scenes whenever mm-hmm. you're trying to step that game up. Yes, you can shoot a video for seven hundred dollars or whatever, you know, for you know, two fifty. Yeah. Um, I guarantee you that that video is literally going to be handheld. Yep. In a parking lot. Yeah. Or that at that a gimbal on a gimbal. Or, or on a gimbal. With the same shots over. You know, it's going to be the same cliche video that you've already seen a million thousand times. Yeah. You know, compared to when you actually pay the, when you actually have a budget and you take that next step up in the game, Mm -hmm. you're actually creating a movie of some sort. You're actually creating something visually beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, there was a time when those videographer, um, I don't want to even use that word, because there's a time when those low budget videos was cool right? yeah because yeah. it was different you can you can see what they're able to do with such a small place. yeah and so whenever that came into the game that was it was interesting and cool the problem is now is that there's a million people mm-hmm. that are doing the same exact thing mm-hmm. so what is standing you out you know what i'm saying so as an artist previously is with uh you know you can jump on soundcloud yeah, and that was something new. But now there's a million SoundCloud, like you know, a million SoundCloud rappers, a million SoundCloud, whatever. Yeah. Same thing with YouTube, right? Mm-hmm. And I feel like we're getting to a point, even though TikTok is a bit easier, but we're getting to a point where there's a million people on TikTok, right? So, if if you're just a single person in the pond, you know, if you're if you're in this in this whole ecosystem where there's millions of people in it mm-hmm. what is standing you out mm-hmm. what is what is act what are, what are people watching if they see if you post your video up mm-hmm. and it looks like the next video that the last person posted mm-hmm. you're gonna get no attention off of it you know yeah. it's like how could you change your game and think outside of the box yeah right to make to make you different yeah i think part of the answer to that is getting your visuals right i think people underestimate how important visuals are. And what it can do for you in this day and age. Because let's not forget, the reason we know about a lot of celebrities, a lot of artists, is because we went down the rabbit hole on social media or something, Mm -hmm. and we came across that video, that that individual's video. Yeah. And what caught our our eye probably wasn't the the individual itself. It was what we was watching. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was like, if you have the right people that understand what you're trying to create, Yeah. Whenever they go down that rabbit hole, we can get their attention within that first five, 10 seconds, and they're going to stick around. And that's how you create fans. Mm -hmm. Because now they're like, oh, this video looks interesting. Mm -hmm. They stick around. Next Mm -hmm. thing you know, five minutes later, oh, this guy ain't that bad. They actually stuck around. Yeah. But if you're telling me the opening shot is of a gas station, yeah. You know, they're going to, you know, and they, they start hearing the beat come up. Oh, this is just another music video. Yeah. You know? So I think it's super important for you to to mold your 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 character as as an artist. You know, it's super important to mold who you are. Mm-hmm. And I, I think you know, visually, you know, doing uh, visuals and taking that next step to actually create something different is super important as an artist. Yeah, that's a lot to compile because that's just like it's it's so important today because it's like. 
It's like you have your music, right? And it's just like if someone if someone wanna to listen to your music, they can just go like on Spotify now. You know Spotify, you know Apple Music, fucking Napster if you really wanted to. But just like if you if you're <laughs> <laughs> my wire right <laughs> somehow myspace again <laughs> MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just kind of like um if you're producing a music video and you're already putting like you know a thousand what difference will another thousand make a lot if you're you know you're you you are you see the value in it and the potential it can bring because if you have a good music video someone can just watch that music video at first and then on the rewatch you're like oh the song's actually pretty good it's like this is another form of advertisement that you should care about just because it's, it will represent you. And as you said, it's, it's your character. It's who, your persona. Even if you don't have a persona, like even if you're just fucking Jimmy John and you're going to be Jimmy John, you know, um, it's, it's, it's so important today to, that your visual content is so important, especially with like TikTok. With TikTok, it's just like 10 seconds. I know there's plenty of you out there who's sitting right now while you're playing this video, maybe, you know, and you're going scroll 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 and so if, if your music video is not able to catch the same way as a tiktok it's you're doing something wrong i mean what i can add on to that um is that we're not putting out content is important i think you know obviously content is king today yeah. of today's but we've seen already the million low budget produce videos out there it's, it's you know this support that's almost it's almost all been done already yeah so how could you be different how could you step your game up you know um there's an artist out there right now that um his, you know what what makes him is his visuals you know and uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan of him and um and honestly his, his visuals are like what's what's making his name right now and um you know and content is king but you gotta also see it as like uh you know it's also art it, it it's art and 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 you as an artist need to create art and if you want people to understand you better you need to take that next level up and stop making you know those small iPhone videos, you know. Um, you care about your art, exactly. And you gotta see, it's, it's, this is a career, right? If you're gonna do, if you're if you're doing music, if you're doing anything in the in the in the industry, it's important that you invest in it. Like if it's a career, people pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to go to school, right, to become whatever they're gonna become. Mm -hmm. But you can't put money in into the career yeah. that you want to create. Exactly. You know, nobody's got nobody is going to listen to your music. You yeah. got to force people to listen to your music mm -hmm. if you want to make it. No, there's a million rappers out there, there's a million singers, there's a million bands out there. Mm -hmm. But if you want for people to listen to you, you have to create something different. You have to be able to invest the extra dollar, like if you was going to school. Like I said, people pay hundreds of thousands of school, you know, to, to go to to go to college and become that doctor, become that lawyer, or whatever. Well, you essentially, you're not a doctor, you're not a lawyer, you don't want to become any of the things. You want to be a singer, you want to be an artist, you want to be whatsoever in the industry. You have to be able to invest in yourself and stop being cheap with it. You can't be cheap with it. You can't. There's, you know, there's too much going on right now for you to think that just one day, miraculously, you're going to fall under. You know, like it's, everybody's going to start listening to you. You know, there's that one in a million that happens, but like, let's be honest, how many once a year? You know, every year there's probably only like three people that blow up yeah. overnight. Yeah. Out of the whole entire year, you, you know, for instance, like this year, the only people I could think about that blew up out of nowhere, you know, that were everywhere is uh, Ice Spice. And after that, I can't even mention, you know, I'm sure there's a few other ones I'm not remembering right now, but like just like two or three. So if. You think that miraculously that's gonna to happen to you? You're gonna be 50 years trying to rap or or do whatever you're trying to do, and it's just not gonna work out. You have to be able to stand out, create content, and actually level your game up and become the artist you really are. But I guess to close it out, and with the, I mean, this episode's gonna be released before the end of the year. Um, 
what is something what is some things that videographers do that needs to be left behind in 2022 that's and a tough question and for them to kind of let's let's say top five top three they need to leave behind step up their game in 2022 or 2023 sorry i forget what year it is i think stop using so much visual effects to hide all your shots and cuts like all those like plug-in transitions they buy online yeah i think it's uh yeah just lean down on it you know or if you're gonna use it use something different don't use the same plugin that has already been used a million times you know? yeah the um it's like they all go to the same website and buy the same the light transition the one where it like traces them the light transition the one that they multiply and they come multiply back to one person and don't don't get me wrong we use that for music video just because like yeah. it was requested but yeah yeah no. I get I, like I give it to you like videographers are somewhat molded this new age the, the new age of music videos yeah, yeah but you're starting to see a lot like especially um, in the Spanish and like in the Spanish community in the Spanish industry a lot of these reggaeton videos are becoming mm-hmm. very artistic mm-hmm. and they're not even doing that you know type of wave anymore of like that run mm-hmm. and gun type of shoot. Um, and I'm starting to see it uh, quite a bit in, in the hip hop game now, you know, more more productions when it comes to things, you know. And um, I mean, it's always been a thing, but there was a moment where like it was that run and guns type style. Mm-hmm. But now you're starting to see a lot more of these high budget films, you know. Yeah. And I, and, I, and I think a lot of that success comes to like a lot of like Bad Bunny's videos. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, as you know, Spanish kid came into the game blowing out numbers and uh, his videos are visually are great. And so. Uh, I see like a lot of people, you know, you, when you're trying to get those numbers, you're trying to, you know, trying to see if you can kind of copy and repeat his success. And so I'm starting to see, you know, people do similar videos to what he's doing and stuff like that. And so, um, you know, I, I believe videographers have a huge importance in our industry. Um, but at the same time, I think whenever you want to take that next step, you know, and get into the bigger productions, because, you know, you can only go so far as being a videographer. Because mm-hmm. once you're a videographer and you're known as a videographer, you'll forever be the videographer. Mm-hmm. And, you know... Um, you don't want to be known as a guy who's... Yeah, and we all have an end game, you know? Uh, at first, I know you want to do music videos and, you know... Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and, and the longer I'm in this game, eventually I figure out, like, you know, I don't want to just stop at music videos, you know? I want to actually create a little short film, you know? See how yeah. far I can get into Hollywood, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, you know, eventually, if, you know, you want to get to that next step, you have to... Take the next step. Yeah. You know, and you want to be taken serious, you know, and actually, you know, you can, yeah, it's great. You're making good money. You know, you're making thousand dollars here, 1500 there. Um, That's what's being up. a videographer. But if you want to get those commercial shoots, yeah, you're not getting a videographer, you know, yeah, yeah. you're going to, you're going to yeah, hire. You want to shoot for Lexus. You yeah. want to shoot for big companies, you know, products, stuff like that. They're not looking for yeah. videographers. There's a TikToker that reminds me perfectly. I see his stuff all the time. I don't know you maybe you run into him. No, I don't know how deep you are on TikTok, but um, there's a TikToker, and don't get me wrong, like um, the guy is doing a grind. It's doing. It looks like it's doing great, and he has a lot of followers. Uh, I don't know. He's he definitely has more followers than we do currently, but he does the whole. Um, and uh, this this is something I personally think should be left behind. Um, is this style of editing, because uh, I forgot his name. He he's the guy who essentially invented this like style. Uh, well, he didn't start inventing the style. I think Peter Peter McKinnon invented the style B roll, where it's like the oh, shit, crazy, you know? Oh, like the swooping, like the, swish, yeah, no, yeah. Um, um, but so I forgot the other guy's name. I don't think Peter invented it, but he, he, I think he, he definitely brought into like the coin yeah. yeah. And then there's another guy behind who who essentially perfected it. I forgot his name. Um, and then there's this guy on TikTok who essentially goes up to random like places and goes like, let me film you like a commercial right now for free. Um, and then you'll, you'll go into like, you'll even go into like five guys. I think he did do a five guys one. Um, but it's, it's just that it's just literally like him doing, you know, you're basically like, you're like, and then he has a, like a pedestal or like, like a, uh, that spins like a 360 cam type of thing. What about lazy Susan? It's like, like Lazy Susan, but like it's a 360 cam and he has his camera just spin around the final product. And that's literally the format of the whole video. But, um, you know, that's that's something I feel like for in terms of commercials for like videographers, like try filming a short film that's a commercial, like old, 
commercials. That's like 30 seconds. We, we did it in film school. Um, or you film a short film that's 30 seconds and that's the commercial. And those are pretty funny. Some of those commercials are kind of out of pocket. You guys see my Dorito commercial. What's your Dorito commercial? We'll pop them up on the screen. Yeah. We'll pop them on the screen. But do you, do you have yours still somewhere? I should have it on a hard drive somewhere. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Well, what happened in yours? No, yeah, I just had like, it. Give like, me like the pit. The it was pitch. like, uh, essentially, it was just because, uh, you know, those Dorito commercials are like super out of pocket. Yeah, yeah. So it was just like, uh, it was a black and white with like the whole film game and stuff. Yeah. Like that. You know, just like a very like Charlie Chaplin style. Yeah, yeah. So it was like you know the guy banging on the vending machine; it wouldn't come out. Yeah. I don't know where it fell down and like all this weird stuff. I can't really remember. It's been so long. Yeah. But I remember it was just kind of stupid. But I remember like people in the class like for some reason thought it was hilarious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ours was um, our our Dorito commercial was uh we did essentially, um, like magical moments for all the like magical moments were there type of thing. And we set it up where you don't see the Doritos bag or Doritos, like Dorito. Um, and like me and my friend in class, I did like, we did like a fake proposal, but you didn't see the Dorito chip. Um, we did one where someone is holding, it looks like they're holding a baby and they're spinning in a circle. And I forgot what the other thing was, but um, it was like all the magical moments and the end of it, it was Doritos. But like we had a Disney font throughout the whole video. Um, yeah, I, I miss doing stuff like that. That stuff is funny as fuck. Um, if you enjoyed this episode, you know, leave a comment down below. Yeah, uh, like he said, if you enjoyed this episode, comment down below, like, share, subscribe. Uh, if you want to see us talk about anything else, uh, comment all that below. Please share. If you want to see anybody on the podcast, uh, comment their names, tag them, do whatever you want to do, and subscribe, follow. You can find us in Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. That's eventually OnlyFans. But yeah, <laughs> see you guys. <laughs>